بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا علی مدد تو لاسٹ ویو اور ٹاکنگ بات لار بفی اور وی ایس پول ڈاؤٹ تھری ریفرنسز آؤٹ آف آل دی ریفرنسز آف لار بفی وی آر ٹاکنگ بات تھری ان پرٹیکولر اینڈ ون آف دیم اور دیر از نو ڈاؤٹ ان دی ڈے آف کیا مت so if you look at the four things regarding kiamat which is the kaim himself so when we say kiamat we are talking about kaim when you, when we are talking about kiamat we are talking about the day of judgment when we are talking about kiamat we are talking about death or moth but we also talking about a huge a big changing that in kiamat is the name of a change so what does change in kiamat and when these changes happen would we be able to see it let's take some example if we think of the time of sultan muhammad shah and at the very beginning when he Uh, became a imam the world was in darkness no electric no cars no technology so time of horse and carriages but within the 72 year of imam sultan muhammad shah's imamat people were going to moon they were talking about going to the moon the cars were uh, invented uh, electric was there and the world had changed the planes were already flying so what happened in the 72 year we can say visibly we saw a big change and these changes that we saw we had not seen that for last six and a half thousand years from the time of Adam. So why did it not happen in 6,500 years, but it happened in only 72 years? Because Kiamat had come, and one of the name of Kiamat, or the attribution of Kiamat is to bring the changing. And it changes things physically first. so we may see and we will pull that ayat where it says i will show you my symbols in outer world and in your personal world subhanallah so now If we take the four names of uh, Qiyamah, again, we, now we are talking about the Imams. So we have the Hujjat Qayyam, the Imam who gave us the indication towards the Qiyamah. Then we have a name of the Qayyam, who brought the Qiyamah about. Then we have a Mazhar Qayyam. who is the manifestation of Qayyam. But then we are missing the Qiyamat itself or Sahib Qiyamat. Because in Allah's creation, everything is alive. When Allah said day, those days are alive. When Allah talks about night, those nights are alive. So when Allah talks about Qiyamat, Qiyamat is alive too. Sure. Meaning, Qiyamat is also a personality. If you go back in, at the time of Imam Hunayn, and when Qiyamat was coming, what changes happened? What happened at that time? And if we think of this Farman of Sultan Muhammad Shah, Amari Jannah Sifida Ho, that when you sit, when you have a time, think where you have come from. And you may go all the way back to Adam. 
Then Imam Sultan Masha is giving us a thought, a food for our thought. Then who was Adam? Where did he come from? Who sent him? If Adam came when the previous Qiyamah had come, what about this Qiyamah? If Qiyam came this time, and Qiyamah came in this time, did Adam also come with him? Shunin? You should, right? Because Qiyamah itself is also a lie, meaning a personality. Now let's uh, take the example of Qaim himself. To us, Qaim was just a concept until yesterday. So what happened today? Now we have a Qaim with a name, a personality. If that is the case, the Qiyamah should also have a name, a personality. Because that is the habit of Allah. Everything He talks about, He never changes. So if a new era has begun, then new era cannot begin without Adam. Because Adam is the first man of the new era. So when we listen to that and when we understand this point, we will be so surprised and shocked that even the new era starts without people knowing it. The example of that is the 12 o'clock. A new day begins. Do we feel it? We don't. We don't feel that the new day has begun. So think of 12 o'clock. What do we see at 12 o'clock? We see a previous day ending and we see a new day beginning without any hiccups, without any notification, without knowing it, it just happens. Meaning, it's hidden, kind of. We cannot tell where the day had ended and where the day had begun. And both happens in the night. You see that? It happens in night. So everything has to do with, again, night, which represent well, some kind of well, hidden. And we already know who the night in this personalities are. Sutama Masha, right? Ujjat Ekaim. He is the Shabekadar. He is the night. He is the one who is keeping the curtain on the Kaim, curtain on the Kaim, also. So whoever is the Kiamat, he's also hidden kind of within him. If it was hard for us to find Kaim, and he was right in front of our eyes, between two Imams, how hard it would be to find Kiamat now? And what are the attributions of Kiamat? For that, Sultan Masha already given us a Farman. Think of Adam. If you understand Adam, you will understand Saib e Kiamat of this time. The story of Adam will be the same story of the Adam of the time of Kiamat. The only way you can find Adam of this time is Saib e Kiamat. If we understand the story of Adam. So let's talk about Adam just for a little bit. He was just a momin, a farmer, a poor guy with no titles, no education, just a farmer, just a you know poor momin. And the Allah of the time, which is the Imam Hunayd, said, "I wanted to 
assigned a new Khalifa. I want to appoint a new Khalifa. Khalifa, my next in line. So, bring me a Momin who is equivalent to Mati. Meaning, it has to be a Momin. He would not be from Nurani family. He would not be children of, of the Imam of the time. He cannot be someone that is already uh, branded, meaning uh, title holder, title or holder, or anybody like that. Just a sida sada momin, equivalent to mati. And when the mati came, meaning the momin came, Allah did what? He poured water into him. He gave him the knowledge, and that became a mud. So muddy water stands for a moment with knowledge. Do you see even muddy is alive in Quran. Even mud is alive in Quran. It's talking about personalities. If you remember the story of uh, uh, Zulkarnain, that he reaches a place where he see the mud. So what was he looking at now? With this knowledge, he was looking at Mominines with knowledge. And in that mud, he saw what? He saw the sun was sun setting in that mud and sun rising was happening from that mud. Meaning, he saw Mominin with the knowledge whom has the Noor of Allah, Noor of Imam, and then Noor was sun setting in the Momin and Noor was rising from those Momin. That is the amazing Kuliyat, the keys of the Quran. Without those keys, if you read the uh, story of Zulkarnain, half of time will not make any sense. They is just wandering around and he's looking at mud and you know and the wall and and the people running around and you know. Why would God tell us a story in the Quran when the Quran is a book of guidance, not a book of a story? It's not a children's book of a story, right? It's a book of guidance for all the people. Okay. So Adam. Adam was just a poor woman, but with the Imam's Ismi Azam, the Imam of that time. So who was Imam Hunayd? What was his title compared to today's uh, Qiyamah time? Imam Mukim, very good. What other title, if there was a Qayyam at that time also, then what was would his title would be? Hujjah the Qayyam. Subhanallah. Is that? No? Okay. So, Time of Qiyamah was time of Adam. We look at the time of Adam as the beginning of the time, but remember that it was also end of the time. End of the time for what? Mm-hmm. Previous era. It was beginning a new era. So we always relate Adam to beginning of the new era. What about the era was just ending? And Imam Hunayd was the last Imam of their era. So now come to this age. Kaim and with the Kaim started the new era. And Sultan Mawashah was the last Imam of previous era. So what did Imam Sultan Mawashah close? The last era. And he was the last Imam of the last era. And we have a new Imam of the new era. And that is written in Sultan Mawashah's will. I want to give you the new Imam of the new time. Yes. Modern Imam of a new time. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, if that is the case, if that time is equivalent to this time, then what that would make Imam Ahmad? Imam Mukim? Because he gave the Ismail Adam to upcoming Nathik. But what other title he had? Because there was also time of Qayyim and time of New Era, time of Adam. And he was the last Imam of that time. 
he would be Hucha Zakaya of that time. Of that time. And this is written in Vajayadin. So, what we are trying to find? We are trying to find Sahib Kiamat of the, this time. But only way we can find him if we understand Sahib Kiamat of that time. And his name was Adam Sarandibi. His, his name was Takhum bin Bajala. Takhum bin Bajala. Thank you. Adam of Sarandibi. Adam of, Sir, uh, Adam of uh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. And uh, his name was Sakum bin Ajahla. And Adam was his title. Yes, Adam was his title. Okay? So, Imam Hunayd had three tells, uh, three ranks. He was Imam Musakkar, he was Imam Mukim, and he was also Hujjat Ekaim. Okay, so why was he Imam Musakkar? Because his father was Imam, his son was Imam. Why was he Imam Mukim? Because he gave Ismi Azam to upcoming Nasik. Why was he Hujjat Ekaim? Because he was hiding the Kaim of that time. Now, in previous 7,000, previous seven eras of 7,000, Kaim was not only hidden, but hidden without a name. There is no name. We don't have a name of Kaim of that time. But when this 7 times 7 happens, and the year of 50,000 begins, the Kaim reveals himself with his name. So we have a name with the title and a face with the title. Meaning you will recognize the Kaim of this time. And that happens only once a 50,000 years. So come to find out there are two eras. One is a small cycle of 7,000 and there is a big cycle on top of it which is 50,000. Again, if you listen to Sudhamasha Farmar, Sudhamasha is saying, so also think who was before Adam. And Akalmand will say, there was another Adam. And there was another Adam. And there was another Adam. Mm -hmm. And we just talked about seven of them. Meaning every 7,000 years, a new era starts, a new Adam comes. Only one thing about Adam and Imam is the Imam are always and always and always from the progeny of the Imam compared to Adam will be from Jamaat, a regular Mu'min. He will not be part of the Imam. So let's summarize what you have discussed, right? And it's good that we understand the concept that there are seven days Allah has made, right? So day of Adam, day of Noah, day of Ibrahim, day of Musa, day of Isa and day of Muhammad. The seventh day, God comes himself and sits on the throne. And that God is Ali Allah, that is Kayam. When Kayam comes, everybody is tested in their deeds and knowledge, seven, 11 by 7. And then... A new era begins. So this one era is equals to 7,000 years. Each prophet has 1,000 years. So the smallest circle would be, let's say, 1,000. And then 7,000. But the way we are quoting Sultan Muhammad Shah's Farman, that Mola said, that think where did Adam come from? Who sent him? What was before him? The one who will be intelligent will think about it. You must think two hours a day. That's how he's, he's kind of, you know, telling us to do what is needed to be done. So this time is the time of seven by seven, like seven thousand by seven. That's forty-nine thousand. Forty-nine thousand, meaning it's a the circle above the seventh uh, circle, meaning fifty thousand. The uniqueness about this time is that the Kayam, the name of Kayam is revealed to us. 
now when we are trying to so we understood kayam which is like end of the circle okay end of the time but then when we are trying to understand the beginning era then we have to look into the last era which began with adam and sirindavi so he was a momin a simple farmer simple man no education poor guy but very very strong in his faith given in isme azam by imam hunaid when we understand that this maazam was given to him by imam hunaid automatically we know he was imam mukim okay and when we talk of adam meaning it's a beginning era meaning that he was uchit e kayam right and of course imam is imam mustakar it makes sense right and then so looking into adam e sirindapi whose name was takhum bin bajala he had no title he was no amaldar he was no big short guy he was very simple man right and his history if we were to look into when he was given his maazam he completed it he worked very hard and completed it and we now know that when a momin who is like a mud starting from dust because the quran talks about that angels were told to bring dust right and the dust was a momin the momin who is given his maazam who works hard becomes mud because ali allah gives him his knowledge meaning marifat when he gives his marifat his title becomes arif so adam is someone who is arif e kamil because he com- he gets complete marifat complete knowledge so adam is serendipity when he he was chosen he, he got isme azam he got all the knowledge though we said he had no education worldly wise he was very poor he did not go to high five university college or this degree or that degree very very simple guy but when he got all the spiritual knowledge marifat then what happened he was brought out of his comfort zone which we have talked about jannat so he started giving knowledge to people then what happened when people heard him giving knowledge of that caliber they said are you trying to tell us that you have, you are imam how can you know about spirituality who you are so they blamed him they defamed him and he had to go into exile his father had to take him to exile because they were they wanted to kill him so that's the story of adam and serendipity and then we will continue talking about today's time but the reason we are reviewing the history that would help us to understand what is happening in current time if we have reached to kayam then we should be able to identify adam too and what would be the characteristics of adam we know now from adam e serendipity that someone similar to that his characteristics should be the one who will be the adam of the time and imam sultan mamar shah being the hujjat e kayam actually gave us assignment in 1900s probably to think of who is adam where did he come from the one who is intelligent will will hold on to this thought the one who is sufi will never let go of this thought because sufi are from the tariqat and that's where the you know the knowledge is given mm. so if you are people of the tariqat mm. meaning learner mm. you will not let go of this thought mm. subhanallah so, yeah.